Are you ready to supercharge the filter function? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do just that with the biro function, which in this first use case scenario allows you to turn the filter into an array formula. And this one formula populates the filter all the way down here. In our second use case, we're going to use the biro to supercharge our filter to be able to evaluate multiple rows or columns of data in order to get our results instead of having to use a helper row or column. So let's go ahead and jump right in. First of all, I want to point out a difference in these two use cases. So in this first one, the by row is our outside or wrapper function, and we have filter inside. And that's because we're actually using by row to turn filter into an array formula. In the second use case, the filter is actually our wrapper function. And what we're using in this case is our by row to accomplish actions that filter doesn't normally support. So in this case, we want to get the yearly total for each sales rep and see if it's greater than our year total goal. And so we can accomplish that by grabbing our row and summing it up inside our filter function. All right, so that being said, let's go ahead and jump into this first one. I'm gonna break this apart first and walk through what it is. And then we're gonna build this from scratch just so you have a better understanding of how it works and what's going on. So first of all, this by row, you take a, an array or range. And so we have this column here that we're pulling in. And then we use this thing called Lambda. And so what Lambda does is it works inside the by row. And this is what iterates through each row. And so what the by row does is basically saying, let's evaluate A2, then A3, then A4, and so forth. And so in this Lambda then, we're gonna take that as row here, you can call this whatever you want, A, B, whatever it is. This name doesn't matter, but it's gonna match what we have here. And so if I say row, for example, here, this row each for each row is gonna represent that row. And so let me clarify that. So A2, for example, the first time it runs through, this is gonna be A2, then it's gonna be A3. And each time it's gonna be represented by row. And so the reason why that's important is then, in this lambda, when we go to our formula, instead of referring to, for example, here, A2, we refer to row, because row is gonna automatically update as the by row cycles through each row. So what that allows us to do is to use this as a placeholder, because if we had A2 here, then it's only gonna do that one row, and then we have to do filter on each row. But now that we have this row placeholder, we can use that here, and this will then take care of it for us. All right, so let's go ahead and build this from scratch. So let's start with our basic filter, and we'll go to our catalog, and we want to filter the items where the category is equal to A2. And so this is the base, right? And so I'm gonna do a little transpose in here, so it's going left, right, step up and down. And so we could drag this down, and there we go, that works, and that's great. Now the issue is, let's say we have a new item here and we select something, well now nothing's showing up. And so we'd have to come back in here manually and make sure we drag that down. The same thing if we inserted a row and I selected something, again, I'd have to come back in here and make sure I drag that formula down. So this by row allows us to apply this automatically to the entire column. And so let's go ahead and start building this out. So we're gonna first do our by row and then we select our array. I'm just going to select the whole thing. I can actually drop the end reference as well, and they'll keep applying if we add more rows. And then what we need to do is our lambda function. And so our lambda function, now we're going to define our variable. And so we can just call this row, and then comma, and then now we do our formula expression. So when you're using by row like this, it's usually easier to build your function first and then convert it. So you can use this with more than just filter, you can use it with countifs or other formulas that don't normally work inside array formula. So we have our original one here. And so what we need to do is we can now take this parameter, our row, and put that in right here. And now this is going to work. Now it's not expanding because we have these formulas here. So if we delete that, now it's gonna run down. And now we come down here and select vegetable. There it works. We come in here, insert a row, select fruit, 
it still works because it's applying to our entire column. And as we go into our next use case scenario, hopefully this will start to sink in a little bit more and you'll be able to start using this in your projects for other uses. So in this case, we have sales rep and their sales for each month. And we want to be able to just pull out some things. So for example, we want to say, hey, who met the year total goal of 130,000? Now we could add a, another column here and put in year total. And perhaps in this case, it would be something you do. But then we have other ones here like minimum sale under 8,500. Well, now we'd have to add, you know, something here and figure out their average. Actually, we'd have to probably be over here to get our average so we could filter those. Uh, max sale, so we'd have to add another column over there to figure out the max sale and then average sale. So what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna use the buy row inside the filter. And so in this case, we're gonna build the buy row first. So if you're familiar with filter, what filter does is you take a range and then you apply conditions. And so you apply condition and if it's true, it'll return that row. And so let's go ahead and start building this. So let's go ahead and do our buy row first. And then I'm gonna select all of our numbers here. So I'm selecting more than one column, but by row goes by row, right? It's in the name. And so if I go back to our Lambda, cause that's where it's gonna start making sense. And I can do our row again, use the same terminology we did before. So if we look now, we can do our formal expression, but what happens in this case, so in our filter, our row was a two, a three, a four, et cetera. And we're using a filter to match that. Now in this case where we have multiple columns, this row actually re represents the entire row. And so what we can do here is something like some row. And so let's go ahead and close it out. And we can see here's the sum. And so you might be ahead of me on this one, but when we have this sum, we could actually just turn this into a comparison. So I can just do greater than, and we could select the cell or we could type it in. And now you can see true, true, false, false, false. If we go back real quick, you can see these are both over 130 and the rest of them are not. So this is what we can use in a filter because we can filter this range by these trues and false. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna take our filter and then I'm gonna grab this range and then comma and use this as my filter criteria. And there we go, Jim and Dwight. Now, if I drop this down to 100,000, for example, now we add those and then to get Ryan, we're basically gonna have to go really low. And now we have Ryan as well. All right, so that is how that one works. And so with this same logic, you're probably understanding now how the rest of these work. And if I click over them, you can see we have the same function going on here. All we're doing is changing our logic here. And so in this one, instead of sum row, we are doing min row less than F11. And this next one, we're doing max row is greater than I11. And then in our final one, we're doing average. And so I hope you are ahead of me now and already have ideas on how to use this in your project. Because what this by row allows you to do is it just opens up a whole new realm of possibilities because you can substitute pretty much anything in here, any formula, and you can use this row. And so that is it for this video. But I want to hear from you guys. What are you going to use this for? Or what have you already been using this for? Drop that in the comments below. I want to see maybe the other people watching this video can learn as well. And we can really take this to the next level. So thanks for watching. Make sure to check out the other videos on our channel for more tutorials on both Google Sheets and AppScript. And as always, have a great day.